Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Test Lawyer Show. Today we'll be talking about what the Renault Zoe tells us about the next Nissan Leaf. Please remember to like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Nissan has not said anything about when they'll be releasing the next Leaf. and I know this is hearsay, but um, Chelsea Sexton is a very reliable source. She got a quote from Carlos Ghosn saying, We can't announce new EVs in advance because unlike our competitors, we are already selling EVs, and this was at CES 2017. I also got a chance to ask Nissan Electric via Twitter when they would be announcing the 200 mile leaf, and they gave me a very corporate response. They just said, hey, we don't have any details to share regarding the future Nissan leaf models, but we suggest keeping an eye on our online Nissan newsroom, which is a great source for information for future announcements. My prediction is that we're going to see the new Nissan LEAF around the New York International Auto Show, which is scheduled for April 14th through 23rd, with Media Day starting on April 12th and 13th. This makes the most sense because the LA Auto Show is in December and the Tokyo Show is in October, which would just be too long for Nissan to wait, and it doesn't make sense for them to release it during the Geneva and Paris Motor Shows. This, is, this new LEAF is going to be a mix of the IDS concept, which you see here, and the current Nissan LEAF. This belief has been bolstered by what have been released as Nissan LEAF spy shots on Motor Authority on February 11th. You can click the link below to look read their article, but you can see some of the cues have changed, like the front end is more of the Nissan V motion, and the headlights are more angular, matching the IDS concept. Not exactly, but these are closer to production looking headlights. Um, the middle of the car looks pretty much like the standard leaf. It doesn't look like much change there. It looks like it's just the front and rear fascia that has had the most um, work done to kind of make it look sportier. And you can see that the rear, there's that flying buttress, which is a Nissan styling cue that's been emphasized a lot lately. And also at the rear, the taillights have been changed to be a little more angular. It looks like they may go up on the C-pillar a little bit, but it's hard to tell with all of the... Um, decorations that they've camouflaged they put on the car some of you might be wondering why I'm talking about the Renault Zoe um, for those who don't know Nissan and Renault are um, co-equal partners um, it's not like Nissan and Infiniti which is a sub brand um, Carlos Goshen is the CEO of both companies and they both own large shares in each other um, so they're not um, dependent on each other in the way of sharing actual models. It's not just a rebranding. They have kept their corporate identity, but they do share a lot of tech and information and they try to have synergies where possible, but Nissan is its own brand and Renault has tried to kept, keep its own face. As you can see, the Zoe is a very French small car, um, but it is the number one European selling electric car and it has the same um, batteries as the Nissan Leaf. So there's been a, a huge release of the new Renault Zoe, which has a huge increase in these advertisements. They're saying 250 miles, but that is the NEDC lab conditions. Those are not real world miles, but on their website, they do say you can get up to 186 miles in the summer and 124 in the winter, which doesn't sound like a lot, but the original Zoe came out with a 22 kilowatt battery. And in the same space, they've stuffed a 40 kilowatt battery in the new Zoe for about the same price as the older Zoe uh, was selling for. So this tells us that Nissan has about double the capacity of the battery in the same space, which would lend us to believe that they could be able to fit a 60 kilowatt battery in about the same size as the old Leaf, maybe widen the wheelbase a little bit, but it doesn't seem unreasonable as the latest um, Nissan update for the 107 miles range was with a 30 kilowatt battery. So what kind of range can we expect from the 60 kilowatt? Doing a little math, it came out large as um, doing a straight um, calculation from the 40 kilowatt Zoe battery performance. You could be able to get to 280 miles in the summer and 186. But realistically, 250 miles in the summer should be easily doable in the next Nissan LEAF. If we look at the Tesla Model S, which is a much bigger and heavier car, the 60 kilowatt hour battery can get 219 miles 
and 225 miles in D configuration. The Chevy Bolt 60 kilowatt hour battery is at rated at 238 miles. We haven't really seen any winter mileage, but it has been shown to be consistent in the field. All we know now about the Tesla Model 3 is that it will have at least 250 miles range and that the 100 kilowatt battery cannot fit inside of the wheelbase, so it'll probably start with a 60 or smaller. Another thing that the Renault Zoe tells us about the Nissan's battery tech is that it doesn't seem like they've solved their winter battery problems. Um, the range drops about 33% from 186 in the summer to 124 in the winter. That is a huge degradation and that's one of the reasons why I haven't jumped on um, a Nissan Leaf with the 107 miles range because I am in New York and winter miles are important to me and I don't have access to consistent charging. So if I could only get 75 to 50 miles during the winter on each charge, it would be very hard. Another thing Renault was able to release on the Zoe was a new tire from Michelin, the Energy EV tire designed exclusively for electric vehicles. It makes the most of ultra low rolling resistance for a very long um, range and also doesn't affect your braking capacity or road holding. Hopefully Nissan will be able to adopt this tech and bring it over with a new leaf to allow for better range and better performance um, with this exclusive tire from Michelin. Final thing I want to talk about was Nissan's commitment to getting fast charging available to its customers. Nissan, BMW, and EVgo have teamed up to put in um, over 607 fast charging stations across the U.S. In 2016, the partnership added another 174 charging stations in 33 states, and they plan for another 50 stations in 2007. These stations are both Chatamo and SEA Combo CCS connections, so they can work for just about any types of EVs, whether it's Nissan, BMW, Chevy, even a Tesla. Um, I'm really glad to see that they've committed to charging infrastructure, and this really encourages me. Also, with the Nissan, with the Renault Zoe, sorry, um, they've updated their app to allow better charging and easier monitoring of your charging and they've also put in a system where you can pay through the app no matter which charging station you go to and I hope Nissan adopts this it seems like their partnership with EVgo would be um, very easy for them to allow you to pay for it all through the Nissan app you don't have to get different cards for each individual type of company that is allowing these fast charging so that would be a real benefit if you could do it all in one um, easy payment, just like one of the Google Pay or Apple Pay, and you could just do it all through your Nissan app. So hopefully this will come to with a new leaf. Thanks for watching another episode of the Test Lawyer Show. Please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Definitely leave some comments on what you think about my speculation on the new leaf or anything else you'd like to see on the channel. You can follow me on Twitter at Test Lawyer Show. You can click the links to see my comments on the V-Motion concept. What a beautiful car that was. And you can also watch the CES keynote from Carlos Goshen about Nissan's future. Thanks.